What is going on with this NFT craze? We got some crypto collectibles selling for over a million dollars. Billionaires like Mark Cuban have been talking about NFTs. Gary V's all over Twitter saying how they're the future. How do these things actually work and should you buy them? I'm not a financial advisor, but I do think it's common sense that you should never invest in something you don't understand. And so I'm going to help you do that in this video as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis, who has built NFTs and made tutorials on this channel on how to code them. We'll talk about, you know, what NFTs are, why people are buying them. You know, is this just a giant money laundering scheme and some things you really need to consider before you buy. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to diapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So a quick recap, like what is an NFT? Well, it stands for non-fungible token. And there are lots of different types of NFTs right now, but the big hype, the big trend right now is around crypto collectibles or digital artwork. So you can see an example of that here on my screen. These are CryptoPunks. These are one of the original NFTs. And these are ones that are selling for just insane amounts of money. So what's behind a lot of this? Well, the trend with digital artwork and crypto collectibles is that there are benefits with blockchain technology that you can't really get any other way. Digitally verifiable authenticity and also digitally verifiable ownership, the ability to trade them trustly, and a lot of other benefits which you're going to see in this video. So those are some of the benefits of digital collectibles over other types of artwork, other types of collectibles. But where does their actual value come from? Because this is one of the most common questions I get. But while the ultimate value is you know, subjective, there's still certain reasons why some collectibles might be worth more than others. I mean, you can see this with other types of collectibles or artwork. So like a Rembrandt painting, for example, is super valuable because of who painted it. It's scarce because there's only one of those paintings probably, and there's no way to go back in time and reproduce a new one. So that's an additional level of scarcity and the historical significance of the artist himself. Okay, so similar types of things are happening with digital collectibles. Some are worth more than others because of their significance significance in time, who created them, their digital scarcity, all that kind of stuff. So CryptoPunks is a great example. Some people are calling this the Rolex of the collectibles world. And I think that's a really good analogy to try to understand other things that humans value that don't really have intrinsic value to justify the price like watches. So let's let's go there. So here's a relatively new Rolex Submariner dive watch. All right, this thing is close to $12,000. Why on earth would anybody pay money for this? I know it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. I mean, I'm a watch person myself, but at first glance, this seems kind of nuts. And on the one hand, like if you are a watch person and you go down that road and you buy this, a lot of them will still agree. Yeah, it's kind of nuts compared to other watches. Well, there's only one way to get a Rolex and that's to pay the premium. And that's part of what makes it work. So let's think about it. You know, I mean, is a Rolex watch really that much better than a watch that's a fraction of the price? I mean, you can make a fake Rolex that's nearly identical for not that much money, right? And so that kind of goes with the NFT argument that everybody's saying like, hey, can I just copy and paste digital artwork? Isn't that the exact same? But the answer is no, it's not the exact same. So here's why. So a duplicate piece of digital artwork, just copy and paste, is essentially worthless. It has no intrinsic value. A fake Rolex has some intrinsic value. You can tell time with it, still looks relatively nice, but it doesn't have the exact same value as a Rolex. So it's not made by Rolex, who controls the scarcity of the entire collection, who validates the authenticity and actually pioneered, you know, making these original watches. I mean, one of these reasons it's so valuable is because this particular model is like one of the original OG dive watches ever. And some people say, well, hey, that's all just like manufacturer marketing hype to like prop up the value of a Rolex to create branding and justify that price point. And some of that is true, but I don't think you can really get Get away with this long term if there's no truth that these things actually provide value to the eye of the beholder. It ultimately is subjective value, but there are still reasons that prop up that subjective value, like the fact of, you know, who Rolex is, the fact that there's scarcity behind this collection. It has historical significance and simply just because they're expensive. So people buy them as status symbols, they buy them as collectors, and the same types of things are true for NFTs. They're digitally scarce. Some collections have historical significance. They can be expensive as status symbols. People can buy them because they're collectors. Ultimately, they do only have subjective value, but different collections have different attributes that help prop up that value. But in addition to these things, NFTs actually have some really unique value propositions that don't exist with other types of collectibles, digital artworks, or you know, status symbols, whatever that humans value. So number one, this is something I don't hear people talking about very much, but it's the fact that digital collectibles don't degrade at all. So if you buy collectible cards, for example, or like even watches, then the quality of these things can degrade over time and actually affect the value of the collectible itself long term. But that can't really happen with a digital collectible. It's one of those things where the scarcity of the object itself can only help increase the value over time rather than hurt it. 
And some people say, well, hey, well, we're going to have better technology to render better artwork that can be stored like this. So the new better looking artwork will be more valuable than the old stuff. So it's functionally degraded. But I still think there's something to the actual original artwork being preserved in full integrity. So another big benefit is the automation of the authenticity itself and also the ownership. I alluded to this earlier, but I want to drill this point in more. Where like, think about a collectible card, for example. If you want to verify that it's authentic and that you are the rightful owner, you didn't like steal it or something, then you have to send it in to some kind of grading service and say, hey, yeah, this is legit. It's like this grade. And this person actually made a, you know, legal financial transaction to obtain this. It's true for collectibles, you know, comic books, watches, whatever. But all that's automated on chain. Like if you have control of the wallet, you own the collectible. You can verify that it's authentic by just looking at it on a blockchain. And the last big benefit that I want to talk about is the programmability of these collectibles themselves. So you can add all kinds of wild behavior on top of them, like automatically generated artwork, the ability to program royalties into the collectible itself to send proceeds back to the original artist anytime it's purchased, and so much more. And these are benefits that you can only get with digital collectibles that you don't get with any other type of collectible or artwork in the physical world. All right, so now let's talk about whether I think you should buy NFTs or not. All right, so like I said at the top of this video, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a blockchain developer. Now, do I personally own NFTs? Yes, I do. That being said, they do ultimately have subjective value. And for that reason, I must issue a word of caution. Things that are this subjective in value are really prone to sharp price corrections, okay? So think about it. If, if bad times come, then things that are, you know, luxury items, status symbols, you know, artwork, things that are valued very subjectively that people don't really need, like food, water, shelter, are going to take a tough hit. So if the crypto market corrects like crazy or the NFT bubble pops, then the value of these things could drop significantly. And so a lot of the value that's going in there with NFTs right now does look like it is in somewhat of a bubble. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, the bubble could get a lot bigger than what we have right now. And maybe it pops much higher and finds a new equilibrium about where we are now or even above. But you have to understand this, like the maximum point of financial opportunity to buy NFT is when nobody's talking about them. So, you know, it would have been the best time to buy all the crypto punks in the world a couple of years ago when nobody cared. So unfortunately, nobody has a time machine to go back and do that, right? So if you buy a crypto punk now, you're exposing yourself to a pretty big risk that the price could go way back to where it was two years ago and you could lose a lot of money. So that's something you should definitely know before you even decide to go down this road. And while that was the maximum point of financial opportunity to buy crypto punks like, you know, original generation NFT, maybe there's more opportunity to find the next generation of NFTs that have a unique set of characteristics that could cause it to become, uh, you know, a canonical collection a lot like CryptoPunks, but where the entry price is cheaper, so if it does just like completely go to zero, then you have way less at risk. Because there's two big things that I think a lot of people aren't thinking about when they FOMO into NFTs. Number one is that there's a floor price, so that's the minimum value that you have to buy in. And if you don't meet that threshold, then you can't even get it. So like if a CryptoPunk costs $20,000, then you can only get a CryptoPunk if you pay that much. And the other big problem is if the market just absolutely explodes, I mean, the bubble pops and the price starts going down, they're not liquid like a cryptocurrency is. That's where fungibility or non-fungibility can really work against you. If you want to try to liquidate a crypto punk as the market's absolutely tanking, then you may not find anybody who's willing to pay the price that you want because nobody wants that particular crypto punk. It'd be different if you bought Bitcoin, for example, and when the market's tanking, there's all this liquidity that you can sell into and someone will probably be willing to buy your Bitcoins even if the price is going down. But that's not necessarily true of these NFTs. And that's something that a lot of people aren't talking about. And I need to warn you, of before you, you know, decide to jump on this train. So all those warnings aside, I do think there's a lot of opportunity here long term. Like I said, I personally own NFTs myself. I think their value is ultimately subjective, but there's still reasons why a large number of people will value it, even if it is subjective value for all the reasons I talked about in this video. And so the last thing I wanted to clear up is some people say, hey, this is just a giant money laundering scheme, right? Nobody actually values a crypto collectible at a million dollars. They're just trying to take dirty money and clean it. And there probably is some truth to some of that. We've seen that with cryptocurrencies from day one. Cryptocurrency has a long reputation of just being a money laundering scheme. But that's also true of green cash that people use for daily financial transactions. But that doesn't mean green cash is necessarily bad. So just because some people use NFTs for money laundering. I don't think that's what's driving this entire mania right now, okay? All right, so that's all I've got. As always, you know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you like this videos and you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, hey, maybe you want to get your hands dirty, learn to create your own NFT, get the coding skills to do that. Well, you can go to my home, YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those, you want to take the next step or hey, 
Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely? I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Don't worry, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero programming experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. All right, so that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.